Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go, I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Sarah McCarthy. I'm the creator of McCarthy Math Academy and I am super pumped that you are joining me today. I know you're busy, I value your time, and I wanna go ahead and jump right in. So today's standard that we are going to break down is MA, try that again, MA.5.NSO.2.4. MA, that stands for math, five stands for fifth grade, NSO stands for number sense and operations, and then we're on 2.4 for that strand. By the way, this document that I am marking up all over, I did not create this. The Florida Department of Education makes this public so you can download it too and mark it up like I do. But I love that they provide this to the public because it allows us as teachers to go in and break down these standards. And I'm kind of just walking you through my process for breaking them down in order to create the resources that are aligned to these standards, okay? So we have, for this standard, students will be expected to explore the multiplication and division of multi-digit numbers with decimals to the hundredths using estimation, rounding, and place value. Okay, so explore was that first word. When we're thinking about it, that's stage one. I call that stage one because we are, this is going to be their first exposure to this kind of skill, not to multiplication, but to multiplying with decimals. And we're developing an understanding. And then we gradually start to bump it up, especially in third, in uh, third grade, in sixth grade, they will be working at it at that procedural fluency standard algorithm level. It also said to the hundredths place. So if here's our decimal, we'll be multiplying and dividing to the hundredths place. So be careful of that. And I love this example right here. It says the quotient of 23 and 42 hundredths can be estimated as a little bit bigger than 46 because 42 hundredths is less than one half and 23 times two is 46. So I know that was very wordy, but when you go to break it down, it's kind of just making sense of numbers. It's saying, okay, that 42 hundredths, that's close to 50 hundredths, which is close to half. So when I'm thinking about cutting something in half and it allows students to explore the possible products and quotients here. So we're making sense of it. That's what the standard is about, is about making sense of it. Um, in the clarifications, it says that this builds the foundation for standard algorithm with division, but we will not get to standard algorithm here. And instruction includes the use of models based on place value and the properties of operations, which we will be using. Okay, some of the related or horizontal alignment or other fifth grade standards that connect with this one are all of these NSO with the one. These are all the place value standards. And for the fraction, we have predicting the relative size with fractions. So this one actually connects really well because we will be multiplying and dividing with fractions and it allows us to see what happens when we multiply or divide with a fraction. I think this one is just multiplication though. I'd have to double check just to make sure. Um, and then in the AR standards, the algebraic reasoning, we're moving to numerical expressions or order of operations. In fifth grade, we have measurement conversions. Then we have real world with money and this geometry standard with perimeter and area. So those connect to the standard. This is all about estimation and rounding and, and this is all about using estimation and rounding to help us understand what's happening when we multiply and divide using decimals. And then in, oh, for the terms so that you need to know, equation, that means that there's an equal sign present. 
And if you see the word expression, it means that there's no equal sign present. So hopefully we'll be able to point out some of those today in the resources. I always like to see where they're supposed to be coming from. And fourth grade, they should have added and subtracted numbers with decimals. But just remember that as of me creating this video, this is the first year of the implementation with the best standards. So we might be a little shaky here. And if you have access to the fourth grade videos, I would check out the standard to help you, okay? Even though it is adding and subtracting and we're moving into multiplying and dividing with them for the standard. And then in sixth grade, we will be multiplying and dividing decimal numbers using standard algorithm with a little bit more fluency than what you're seeing in the standard. Next, we have the purpose and instructional strategies section. I'm just gonna point out a few things that jumped out at me. It says that this benchmark connects to the work students did in fourth grade with adding and subtracting of decimals. And remember that students achieve procedural fluency. That's the third step in sixth grades. With fluency, this is the exploration level. Lots of hands-on, lots of drawings, lots of making sense of what's happening with these numbers, which is different from the common core requirements for fifth grade, where we did multiply and divide with decimals at a little bit more of an intensity than this exploration level. I actually like that we're starting with this and that the number sense is there. I think this was a great move. It says instruction of this benchmark will focus on number sense. Yes. Students should explore how the products and quotients of whole numbers relate to decimal. So seeing the patterns. If I know what eight times seven is and what 56 divided by four is, I can use those to help me with problems or expressions like that. See, there's no equal sign present. We have an expression here, an expression there. Expression and expression. Um, lots of classroom discussions to discuss what's happening with these. Have students come to the understanding of what's happening with that decimal point when we're doing this. I like this. It says that teachers should connect what students know about place value and fractions. For example, because students know or hopefully have learned with fractions, know that multiplying a number by one fourth will result in a product that is smaller than, because in fifth in fourth grade, they should have done something like four times one fourth and saying, oh, that gives me a product of one, one whole, which is smaller than the four. That we can connect that to multiplying by a number by 25 hundredths will also result in a smaller product. And then in division, it will result in a larger product. So we're, it's really good to take time in the standard. The standard is specifically calling out, we need to have these discussions of what's happened to the number when we divide with decimals and multiply with decimals. And that we should generalize patterns with multiplication and division of whole numbers and fractions. And of course, we, we've already mentioned this, but models will help students explore multiplication and division using base 10 rep representation and place value blocks. This right here is just talking about some of the confusing points that students might have, which we've already discussed here, but you can take a closer look at that. And these are some examples of instructional tasks. So what's the same about these expressions? See, there's no equal sign present, they're expressions. What is different? Explain, how can you use to the equation 2 times 12 equals 24 to help you find the product of 2 times 1 and 2 tenths. Explain. Here, Raoul reasons that the product of 82 and 56 hundredths will be greater than 41 and less than 82. Explain whether or not his conclusion is reasonable. So this is really about what's ha about number sense. So let's see how taking on the best breaks down that standard and uh, gives you practice that's specifically aligned to that. So when you're at the website, you're going to click members enter here or the tab up top. Either one, I switch back and forth. Taking on the best, we're on fifth grade. We are on number sense and operations and we need to scroll down to this one right here. Exploring multiplication and division with decimals. All right, so here we have two, three, ooh, a bunch of videos, more than, I, 
more than I thought. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. Um, we have four videos here for the bronze level resources. And if you have a bronze plan or a silver plan or a gold plan, you have access to these bronze resources, which are the video lessons and the printable student guides. So um, you can see here's the, the video lesson. You just click play. You can full screen it there. And you have the printable guide right here. See how it says use place value relationships to explore multiplication with decimals. That same wording that's in the standard. Multiply each or model each expression with a drawing to solve. So in the video lessons, we're breaking down how we can connect five times four to five times four tenths to five tenths times four tenths. Breaking down what happens and how it's similar, how we're still doing the same operation here, still having groups of things, but it looks a little bit different. And then for division, this is the guide there. These are really tiny, tiny, tiny blocks. Um, I hope they print out well for you, but we're shading in a lot. And also I'm gonna give you a heads up. This one is going to take a while and you'll need some colored pencils to model it in or um, crayons, but crayons may not have. By the way, do you say crayons, crayons, crowns? I love all the different ways that people say crayons. It's like one of my favorite word words. That's a <laughs> Whew, butterfly. Um, you will make some time for this. Be ready to pause it and let your students draw it in. It is important. We are exploring what happens here. So give them time in this one. You'll know what I'm talking about when you see the video. It takes a little bit to draw these out. Um, here, using estimation to multiply numbers with decimals. There we go. So first we'll estimate and then we'll find the exact value there. And then using estimation to divide numbers with decimals. So if you're not sure what's going on here, you can go ahead and take a look at that video lesson and we'll break it down first with estimation and then finding the value of the expression. There's that word that you need to know. All right, so those are your video lessons. If you have the silver plan, you should be able to click right there and it will take you to this page. If you don't have the silver plan, it'll just say you don't have access. If you would like access and you'd like to upgrade, let me know. Um, there are printables, answer keys, and this math misconception mystery video specific to the standard. I'll show you the printables. So here's that video lesson we know with that icon. And then we have um, extra practice, the video lesson with division, and extra practice. I actually went a little bit easier on you on them for the extra practice because I'm telling you after this one, they're going to be like, oh, it's so much coloring. And it is. But guess what? They're going to learn how to um, divide with decimals and what it looks like. There's another practice video using estimations to multiply. We've showed you that. And then here's the extra practice that you get. So the extra practice lessons do not have a video lesson. It's it's I've always had some of the feedback that I got with other programs that I've created is that teachers love having the video lessons and then loved having the extra practice for students to continue practicing on their own to make sure that they've got it. So that is what I was trying to do with this. Because I listen. Here is the math mission. This is a math task, so usually they'll have multi step, multi part problems. So it says explain how you can use the expression seven times four to help you solve seven times four tenths. Model seven times four tenths with a drawing to find the product. So this is not something you want to throw at them at the very beginning of this unit, but after they have had some exposure with the video lessons and with that extra practice. Now they're ready to dive into a more complex problem like this. Okay. And here it says, Shaquan says that she has two and eight tenths divided by four tenths is 70 because she used 28 divided by four to determine the quotient. Explain how Shaquan could use estimation to determine that 70 is not a reasonable answer. So take a look at that one. And then this is your math misconception mystery problem. The video is right here. It walks you through the whole process 
I walk you through the whole process in the video, but I'll explain the process here. Students will solve this problem either independently or with a group, whatever you choose, and then they will watch four characters solve the same problem. The characters are just me dressed up in silly costumes, having some fun. Three of those characters will make a mistake that students tend to make when they're solving these problems, and only one student, one character, sorry, is correct. So then after they watch and they jot down their notes, they'll fill out page two, which is the detective report. They'll state that the most reasonable answer belongs to character number whoever, why? And then let's help out the others. So I do include this with the answer key. So you have all of my notes to help you guide their discussions, but it's awesome for group discussions. And they're really paying attention to what every little detail that the character is saying um, because sometimes the characters can be really close, but they might say one little piece that's wrong. So it really does promote excellent math discourse and discussion and error analysis, all those fancy words that we use in education. All right, those are your silver resources. Um, some people do have the gold plan, so I'll go over that. The gold plan, the main features of the gold plan are the mini assessment and McCarthy Math 155. You should also see this video. You might be watching it right here too. Um, it's ad free because it's just a little perk of being a gold member, but these videos breaking down the best are available on YouTube too for everybody to help them break down the standards as well. So just a little perk there, but the main reason for having the gold would be the mini assessment and math, McCarthy Math 155. Here's the mini assessment. And you might be thinking, well, my county provides us with assessments that we need to use. And that's great. Here's just some extra practice and it doesn't even say assessment on it. It just says, show what you know, right? So you can use that however you see fit. Answer key is right there. And McCarthy Math 155 is a program that I created to align with the Common Core standards. Um, after studying the best standards, I was like, I need to create something else for you all. <laughs> that really specifically aligns. I'm not trying to make 155 work when um, there's a lot of changes. So that's why taking on the best is here. But a lot of people said, you know, we love McCarthy Math 155, can you make it available? And that's why if you have it, you have it in the gold package and I'll just show you what it is. So just be careful because this is aligned to the other, the old standards that we had. But let me see, operations with decimals, there is multiplying and dividing numbers with decimals there. But, however, <laughs> I would be really careful because this, um, this is kind of the common core way that we were entering into these numbers with decimals, multiplying and shifting our decimal, where the fifth grade doesn't get this intense as you're seeing right here. So you can take a look see if it'll work for you, but um, I know by looking at it that this is kind of more of what they're going to be doing in sixth grade at this point with multiplying and dividing numbers with decimals, um, but they might be able to apply some of what they've learned in the videos to practice these two. So just be careful with this particular standard, but there's a lot that does trickle over into the new best standards. So you have that. All right. So that is it for going over the resources that are aligned to the standard that we broke down today. I hope that you found this video to be helpful, but I want to close out this video by thanking you for all that you do and reminding you that every day, what you step up and do in your profession, it really does matter. Not only are we trying to help our students to become the best versions of themselves, we are also trying to learn and grow. And I love being able to support you and try to put time back into your pocket. And uh, I just want to thank you for all that you do and to remind you to take time for yourself too. I need that reminder. So I'm reminding you. Thanks for being a rock star and I will see you soon. Bye. Okay, so I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm gonna ask you to do one more thing, okay? If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best <laughs> of my ability. All right, for real now, bye.